This is Modern Photo Solutions, helping you find modern solutions for life's photographic journey. Taking you from photo overwhelm to photo fabulous in just a few taps. Your story matters. It's time to start telling it. Hey everyone, welcome to Modern Photo Solutions. I'm Steph Clay and I am so excited about our guest today. I'm here today with Peppermint Gramberg Jones from OneLittleBirdDesigns.com and her di digital memory keeping supplies can be found at The-LilyPad.com. Hi Peppermint. Steph. It feels so good to say that intro again. <laughs> I know, I was like, oh, it's so weird. She said her last name. Oh. <laughs> I know. It's so great to be recording with you again. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I want to share with our listeners who have people, some people here are going to be freaking out when they hear your name <laughs> announced. They're going to be, what? And then other people aren't as familiar with you. So. About who? <laughs> Peppermint was one of my co hosts on the Digi Show back in the day, uh, along with Katie Nelson. And we recorded tons of shows, and Peppermint is always good for a good laugh and tons of techie geeky information. And so I'm uh, grateful to have her here again. Set the fire really high. <laughs> Just to I have to be with. funny and know stuff now. <laughs> well, you do that. You, that those are your t some of your talents. You have lots of talents, <laughs> but those are a couple of them. Let's share with our listeners, too. You've done a lot of product design throughout the years. Uh, I wanted to share with the listeners a little bit more about you and about what you do. So let's talk about the product design for a minute. Okay. Where? What are some of the companies that you design, you have designed products with and for? Um, I only design the digital products for me. That's just me, me, me. Um, those ones are at the, the Lily Pad. And... Um, I designed physical products in the past for a few different companies, um, some kit clubs like Gossamer Blue, still love them over there, and um, did a core kit for Becky Higgins back in, gosh, it wasn't that long ago, you know, but it feels like years. <laughs> in, I know. In, in digital and in the internet, it all happens so fast. It was like last probably like a year ago now that it came out, I think like last January, maybe last Is it, winter. Was that it was the last time I went to Disney. So oh. <laughs> <laughs> I measure everything in Disney years. It Which was my last hilarious, hilarious <laughs> that you do that because that's how I measure my life. But, but you I did that to me. Yes. Thank you very much. I'm so glad that you're going to give me credit for that. No, you get all the credit and all the blame, frankly, <laughs> Because I was always like, what's the big deal about Disney? Anybody who listened to the Digi show would know that. But for yes. the longest time, I was like, yes, yes, Disney. It is so great. Good for you guys that you love Disney so much. <laughs> you did not. As and you did so not care know. for it either. You didn't. It was just not. Your I'd thing. never, I had never been. And I didn't understand, like, why as an adult I would care or be swept up in the magic. And then I agreed to go. With yes, you. Yes. And life changed. And got swept up in the magic. <laughs> and now like the magic, I seriously, this is going to sound like I'm just being a total dork, but like legitimately the magic lives inside me. Like anybody, oh. I even took a friend of mine who was very like, one of her pet peeves, she says, is adults who like Disney. Like She, she was always like, I don't get it. It's so immature. And I was like, whatever, you're, you're coming to Disney. Because we ran a race. There. I've even run a race there. I know, <laughs> which I love. <laughs> and she agreed to run the race with me. And then I'm like, we're going to be there. Just go. She's like, I don't care about Disney. I don't see why I should go. It seems ridiculous and silly to me. And even she, by the end, was like, okay, I get it. When you go to Disneyland, especially if you go as an adult with other adults and you're not having to, like, chase kids around or deal with tired kids or hungry kids when it's just you – I think she saw the magic in it then of being able to just be a kid for a day without taking care of anybody. And that's really what it is for me. I've never taken my kid to Disney. <laughs> I don't plan on it. I love that. People tell me all the time, they're like, I don't understand why you would go to Disney without kids. And I'm sitting there thinking, yeah, because you don't <gasps> know how to do Disney. Kids? <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> it's the truth. <laughs> I still have to take my kids because they get mad, but I do as many trips without them as I do with them. His son has actually been to Walt Disney World a couple times with his dad, So, and I've never been to Walt Disney World. So, I mean, he's fine. He's had Disney experiences. He just hasn't had them with me. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay, so back to designing products. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. The... Okay. So I designed that car kit back in January, and then um, – Shortly after that, maybe a few months. No, just before that, I had um, kind of centralized my product design to a company called Ink to people who who buy physical memory keeping products might know of them. They own um, or they are the distributor for like Ellie Edwards products and Studio Calico. And um, a few others that okay. aren't necessarily memory keeping related. They have um, Tomcat Studio and Baby Boy Bakery, and they do a lot of influencer commerce. So I kind of joined them, not as an employee. I mean, I'm still, I'm still me, and I still design as one little bird. But I just design for them right now. So that's where my physical products are, like stamp sets or papers or mainly a lot of stamp sets. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's, I mean, I love Disney and I love stamping. That's pretty much me in a nutshell. I love it. That makes me so happy. So happy And we'll hear. find out today that I also love Apple. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Slowly converting you to all of the ways. I know. I'm like I'm a decade behind everybody in the in the free world here. <laughs> okay, so your your personal storytelling and memory keeping has been an evolution. Can you share with us a little bit about that? I, yeah, I mean, I think I've done a little bit of everything as far as format goes, and I I've come to embrace that, especially in the past couple of years where my time has been more limited and um, I started in paper, moved to digital, of course, and then started designing digital product. And when I found that I was spending so much time in front of the computer designing digital product, then I sort of moved back to paper. I've done pockets. I've done full layouts right now. I'm really, this year, I'm all about these traveler's notebooks. And that's the part that I think I've learn to accept and almost seek out is that the way to keep me excited and to keep me showing up at the table is to change formats. Like I know some people will say, Oh, I don't want to change formats because I want all my albums to be the same size or I want them all. I want continuity through everything. I don't want to switch between digital and paper or pockets and layouts. And I want to, but I just think if you find yourself Losing enthusiasm, the best way to to get it back is to find a new format and switch to it and play in there. So these Traveler's Notebooks this year, I'm just, I'm all about them. I live for them. Partly because um, they're so small. <laughs> you love tiny things. <laughs> yeah, I love tiny things. I love the, like the ratio of them because I like my white space. But also, um, you know, it's kind of like I have done layouts for a couple of years and I still love doing full layouts, but I missed recording. Like when I started going through my photo collection is what happened last year. I was kind of going through and cleaning it all up and making sure that I tagged things and deleted bad photos and stuff. And I got kind of sad when I was seeing how many photos I didn't really do anything with just everyday photos that I was still taking, even though, I, you know, like stuff we ate, yeah. those kind of, I take a lot of that. I take a lot of photos around the house or my cats or, you know, cause my son's 16. So he's not, he's not exactly posing for pictures at this point, but I take a lot of everyday photos. And then I was like, you know, I never really did anything with these, but I didn't want to go back to pockets cause I'd kind of been there, done that. And I was a little burnt out on pockets. And so I thought I'm going to do these traveler's notebooks, but I'm going to do it more as like a, almost like a project life or a um, everyday life type journal as opposed to stories, like bigger stories, just small stuff. I like love that. I got the mail or the shows we're watching, the same kind of stuff I used to put in my Project Life albums that I kind of stopped documenting when I stopped doing Project Life. And I just 
still the bulk of my photos. So I love, like I'm sitting here flipping through my traveler's notebook right now. I just, I love doing small stories. You know, I have to embrace that. I, and then I have to also embrace that I get burnt out on doing small stories because I, my life's also very similar from year to year. So really, once I document a full year of small stories, the next year, it's all out of the same small stories. <laughs> we go to the same restaurants. We do the same things. I'm still watching the same shows. So, but it's good, I feel, to kind of go through a cycle where I, every once in a while, check in and get that all documented and kind of celebrate it for a while before yeah. I go back to doing some bigger stories and more my, my feelings where I journal more and talk more I also started journaling though separately I'm kind of diversifying or I'm separating all my stuff out this year I started daily journaling and this um Japanese journal and then I play in there too with stamps and supplies and stuff and that's where I just write the really sometimes insane stuff (laughs) but also what I did what I you know stuff that's in the news um, I have like a column, or, like a section on each page every day where I just write gratitude type stuff or stuff that made me smile. So it's all, as long as I'm getting it somewhere, I consider it a victory. Yes, I totally agree. And, and I think understanding yourself enough to know what you need in order to be able to, like you said, I love the way you put it, showing up at the table each day and getting it done you know, that you need to be be able to change it up. That's, you know, whatever works for you, that's how you have to do it. For me, I have to. I mean, and I know some people won't. Like for some people, that would be a deal breaker if they were trying to reinvent the wheel every week or every year. Because I kind of do this every year. Um, But for me, I found out that the years I didn't document were years where I was kind of, my plan had been just do what I did last year. And then... I'd kind of been there, done that. So I, I think I have a short attention span, really, with my memory keeping methods. But I'm so super pumped. Nobody is more pumped than me at how many different formats now there are yeah. to document things. Because there's stuff I haven't even done yet. So I'm like, next year, like something, somebody will do something new. I'll be like, next year, that's I'm all over that. That's my thing. So That's wonderful. So good. And I love that you're getting a lot of your your little stories and details down too. I started doing that. Well, because I do, I do my daily pages where I'm documenting my days, but I realized that there were a lot of people in my everyday life that I see every day that I don't never, that I never ever would think to document. And so I decided that I needed to start documenting them. And it came to me one day when I went in, because I go to the same gas station every day after I drop my kids off to get a soda. And I, my dad came with me when he was visiting in town and I walked in and all the employees were like, Hey Steph, Hey Steph. And my dad was like, wow, you're a regular. And I'm like, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And they said, Hey, we haven't seen you for a while. Cause I'd been out of town and they had all missed me because I'd been out of town. I was like, these are people that need to be in my story. And so as they were all introducing themselves to my dad, I was like, well, I have to document these people. So I stopped and took pictures with all the selfies with all the people in the gas station. Yeah. So I could. But it's just, you know, those little details that normally, I think a lot of times we overlook and miss and don't it's, get down. I, it's really weird to me. Like, cause I journal every day and it's not with photos. I don't normally put photos in this um, journal of mine where I write, Uh, but I do tend to jot down similar things, what I worked on, like kind of what the broad strokes of what projects I was working on that day and what kind of progress I made. And then I, I always write down what we had for dinner. Um, I usually write down if I started a new book or if I, if I watched a favorite show and then I, I'm, I'm a big news junkie, like, Always have been, always will be. So I'm someone who has the news on all day. And of course, there's a lot of news right now. Yeah. So, I, so I jot down like news stories or my what I was thinking about them. And I was telling a friend of mine the other day that I was I, periodically, I just flip back through and kind of see the things that I wrote. And I was telling her how nerdy it was, like how often certain things I noticed appeared in my journal. Like just random people on the news <laughs> that I like mark up that I was excited to see an interview with. Them. I was like, twenty year old me would be like so 
so embarrassed at what 40 year old <laughs> finds exciting. She'd be like, really? You were excited about a senator? Like, <laughs> <laughs> kind of life ridiculous. yeah like just so excited to see someone appear on my screen talking about health care or something right and it's I'm always like oh this guy's my favorite this guy's my favorite like <laughs> so yeah it's good to jot it down though because it's like when you go back and look through it you start to think like okay yeah this really is a part of who I am at this point like this is me right now I love it I love it thank you so much for sharing Love that with us. Another thing that has been kind of an evolution for you is your smartphones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's what we're here to talk about today. Smartphones. Yes. I wanted to do a show that wasn't, was not a, you know, totally bashing one platform or the other. I've started to work with Android for the last few months and I, there's things yeah, how that I that- like about it. How does that work? So, like, you have another phone number on an Android phone just so that you can play with Androids, I guess? <laughs> no, I don't have service on it. So, I bought a phone oh. that I don't have service on. But you uh, use it over Wi Fi. I use it over Wi Fi, yeah. Which is kind of a pain sometimes. There are a lot of times that I think, oh, I should take this with me. And then I'm like, no, nah, I can't download that stuff. Never mind. I'll just leave it at home. So, but I, it's great because I, I really am enjoying getting to know the Android platform and there are a lot of things about it that I really like a lot. Uh But, um, so I knew that you would be my best person to come on (laughs) the show. (laughs) Your best person. (laughs) To talk about this because tell us a little bit about your smartphone evolution so people know where you're coming from. All right. My Genesis was BlackBerry and I still honestly to this day miss my BlackBerry a lot of times. I started (laughs) with a BlackBerry, um, moved to Android for, I think I had two Androids, maybe three. I might have had three. And then um, switched to iPhone with the iPhone 6 and I now have the 7. Not the Plus, just the the normal sized one, the human hand sized one. <laughs> Not the tablet. I couldn't, I, I just can't. But I, you know, I have an iPad um, Pro that I got this year and I have an Apple Watch too. So it's like, holy cow. You know, I have, you know, I'm, I'm covered. I don't think I need the giant phone too. Yeah. I'm still completely Windows based in my computers though. I don't, I haven't gone to like MacBook. Or anything. I was gonna. I was thinking last night. I was like, I'm. I will freak out if Peppermint says yes. So I'm Mac now too. I will. I will die. I don't see it happening. I really. Don't. I don't either. That's why I would have been so shocked. <laughs> that one I don't. That would be a big leap for me to make because you know I actually don't. Most of the software that I use is, um, like Google. I like Windows. My husband builds my computers. Yeah. It's just not. It's not going to happen. At one point, because I'm thinking about replacing my laptop soon, I was like, oh, I guess I could get like a MacBook. But I think I get so frustrated going back and forth between two different operating systems. I don't, you know, I don't notice it between phones and tablets and things. But I would definitely notice it going between. I spend so much time on my computers. I don't even like going from two monitors down to like a single monitor on my laptop. So going from one operating system to a totally different operating system would be too much for my feeble little brain. I did that for a while and it was frustrating. It was hard. Yeah. I think like I'm good with Windows. I never had a Windows phone, you know, so I've I've always had kind of a separation between my computer OS and my phone OS. And I'm just not, I'm, I see all sorts of things though that you can, Sometimes I'm like, oh, why can't my phone just do this? And then I look and see if I had a Mac, it could, you know. And then I'm like, ah, darn it. This is not worth it to get a Mac. Right, for that. right. What kinds of things? I'm curious. Do you, can you pull it out uh, of the, off the top of your head? Love to be able to use iMessage on my computer. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Like That's just annoying when I'm having a full-on conversation with someone on my phone and I can't just – and that was something I could do on Android, you know, because I could – It was all it's all Hangouts based on there. So as long as I had Hangouts installed on my computer, I could seamlessly go from like 
being on the go, talking to somebody and then come sit down and continue the conversation. Now I have to switch. Like when I get to my computer, I'm like, stop texting me now. Get me on my computer. Because I don't want to sit and keep typing on my phone when I'm at my computer. So I do a lot of switching. And I wish that there was a way. And near as I can tell, there isn't. Like there is no app that can pull my iMessages over onto a Windows machine, which I think is ridiculous. Yeah, someone should make an app. Make an app <laughs> that can let me do it. For real. It's that so, like, that's one thing. Um, the iCloud, a lot of iCloud stuff, um, just I, I can do it on my computer. It doesn't work. So, you know, like the True. photo stream has never worked on my machine. And actually, when I switched to Windows 10, iCloud was the only was the single program that kept causing me to have to reinstall my operating system. It wasn't until I realized that and didn't install iCloud that I could even run Windows 10. Really? So, yeah, I've heard a lot of people say that iCloud on a Windows machine is super wonky. It, you know, the photo stream works for like a month. And then all of a sudden it just stops working. And the way to fix it is to like uninstall it, empty it all out, reinstall it and let it. And I'm like, I don't have time for that. Yeah. I just, use it. that's fine. I'll just put it all in Dropbox. It always works. And, you know, there's workarounds for it. But yeah. I've heard that if I had a Mac, that would just be a nice seamless thing for me. It is. It is. Yeah. But I still use Dropbox a lot and Google Photos and other things actually a lot too. So it's not always the end all be all <laughs> either. Yeah. It is for some people. Yeah, I, guess, I always but. use Dropbox, so I'm always hesitant to move. A friend of mine just recently started using Google Photos and is in love with it. And she keeps telling me, she's like, you got to do it. You got to do it. But I'm like, that's another thing. I got to take the time to like figure it out. And right now the whole Dropbox thing works for me, but I know I should. I'm just, yeah. I mean, I was, as we're learning, I'm just really slow to adapt. Yeah. Well, you are on some things, other things you're like right there changing quickly, but yeah, Google photos. I kind of am in love with Google photos too. It's in case you just Yeah. Know, she loves it. She like it just makes albums for her of stuff automatically. And yes, that it, it does. Like she can just type my name in and bring up every picture of me. And she's just like, it's great. I didn't even have to do that. I'm like, that does sound great. But uh, <laughs> yeah. I already feel like it that I go through that. I have a whole system set up just to get all my pictures funneled into one place mm -hmm. and to start changing the funnel. It's it's just too much. For me. Okay. So you don't have to change your funnel. You just have to yeah. just, Okay. Yeah, I have this free class peppermint that you ought to take. <laughs> I will. Okay. You know, I'm I'm leaving for vacation for a few days. So maybe, I'll, maybe I'll check that out. Yeah, it only takes 30 minutes to go through the whole course. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all about it's Google Photos. Like says it's like a conversion session where you're going to get me to be like, ah, I can, I can hey. take that life. If I was able to convert you to Disney, I think I can almost <laughs> convert you to anything. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Very impressionable. <laughs> Although I did have to go with you to Disney to <laughs> make that happen. Right, you're going to have to come to my house and set up Google Photos in order to prove to me how amazing it is. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's jump into this a little bit and talk about some of the things that maybe you liked on Android that you missed about Android and you know, just things like that. That's what I want to hit on today. And Apple. So let's talk about some of the things that you love about each platform. Okay. Yeah, I don't have any animosity towards um, Android. I honestly switched because I had a lot of um, app envy. And because in this industry, it, you could be left behind if you didn't have the apps. Like Instagram took forever to get to Android. And that was just, I mean, at, when you're running a business, that's just hard right. to accept yeah. that you can't even get on whatever the next thing is for your business that could help you grow your business and you're waiting around a year. And that doesn't happen as often as it used to, but it still happens quite a bit. I think, I mean, I just said to somebody the other day that I don't think it happens that much. And then my husband, who's still on Android, was like, I think you just don't notice it now because you're the person who can get whatever app you want. Whereas, so I just, I'm not seeing it as much. Yeah, I I think I mean there let's talk about that for just a minute cuz I 
I think a lot of people that are on Android have misunderstandings and think that it's the reason that there's not apps available on Android is because people don't like Android or people, you know, or the developers and the companies don't like Android. Android is hard to develop for. It's super hard to develop for. And it's so segmented. Yes. I mean, there's no, I don't think there that Google can even track how many different devices and operating systems everybody's on because every carrier updates their phones at a different rate. Every car- every carrier has like their own skin over certain phones. So like even if you have a like a Galaxy 7 and your friend on, you know, on Verizon and then your friend has a Galaxy 7 on Sprint, you'll be running different operating systems just because Sprint's rolling stuff. And I know that happens to a certain extent with Apple too. Um, I know that sometimes, you know, like an AT&T iPhone will get their upgrade faster than a Verizon one, but it's still all going to the same hardware. So it's just easier to roll that out. And, you know, you can't force anybody to upgrade, which I run into that all the time. (laughs) My sister, especially, I'll be like, check out these new emojis. She's like, I haven't updated since OS 9. (laughs) Yeah. But, you know, yeah. so they still run into that. You can't force a person to upgrade if they're if they're not going to upgrade. But but at least it's such a smaller pool that they're rolling things out for. So it's like, you, you know, you could make an amazing app for the latest cutting age Android phone and then just do nothing but get bogged down in customer service emails from people running old versions or different phones that can't run your software. And you, it, I mean... When companies have to choose where they're going to put their money, yeah, dealing with that much customer service and bug fixing is just obviously you're going to prioritize the one you know the least resistant path, which you know Apple has managed to do that. Yeah, I think and, Android and- trying to do that more. You know, I think as they're moving towards like the Google Pebble, that you might see Android developers just specifically designing for. A certain phone and you might start seeing apps in the store that are only for the if you don't already you, that might exist but I would imagine that as Google tries to like centralize that that there might be apps that are going to be just like the iPhone where it's like no you can only run this on these specific Google phones because developers will be like I'll, I'll tackle that but I'm not tackling all of them yeah and and as also companies like Google are releasing these phones it it also depends on what kinds of tools they're making available for developers to develop for that phone on the Android platform as well. If Google's making tools available that make it easier to develop on that phone on Android platform, you definitely will start to see more and more apps specifically, like you said, just for that phone, like the Pixel or whatever. Oh yeah, it's the Pixel. I was calling it the Pebble. That's a watch. I, was See, say, I don't even know. My mom got a Pixel actually. She because she's still Android based too. She got one of those Pixels because she just was. I mean, she loved it, and the guy at the Verizon store convinced her to get it. But she still doesn't convert it over to it. I find it like that just baffles me. I'm like, Mom, you've got a brand new phone sitting in a box on your desk, <laughs> and you just because she doesn't want to like load all her apps. <laughs> she just, it's been like six months, Steph. That's she had funny. Phone. I don't do that with phones. I've done that with a computer before. When I got my new Mac, I did that because that was terrifying for me. But (laughs) I'm I'm all good now. My Mac and I are buddies. Yeah, but I I think – and that's how it is when When I was on Android, it was frustrating. But I was never one of those people who felt like it was – some sort of slight, you know, I didn't feel like companies were slighting me or saying like, Oh, we don't care about you because you're on an Android. I know that that's a, like a commonly held belief where people think they're being ignored by companies or app developers. And I just, I mean, as an Android user, I kind of just had to make that choice. Like if I want to be able to use these apps when they come out, then I'm going to have to switch. I'm just, Because I don't see an immediate solution to the problem, nor should there be. Because if you, you know, if I wasn't running a business and didn't have such a negative effect to not being able to get to these things or to not be able to access these new social media apps or these new um, 
programs that can help me with my business, then there would have been no incentive for me to switch. And I would have gladly stayed on my Android. My, my husband has zero incentive to switch and he doesn't, he doesn't want to. He'll be Android for life because there's no downside to him yeah. staying on it like there was for me. And he has plenty of upsides with it. You know, I don't, there's, Apple makes some forward movement towards things like widgets and, um, you know, now they put them in that, whatever that thing is. I don't even know that thing you slide left for. <laughs> the menu? <laughs> is that what it is where you can like drop all those little widgets? I haven't gotten that far to figure out how to do that. I just, they, now the am I? No, on the, I'm the Oh, on the iPhone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right all the way to the left. Yeah, I don't know what that menu is called there. either, actually. I I call it my widget screen. Yeah. And that's like super great that I can do that now and I do have lots of widgets in there. I think but it's that's not actually like, what it is. It's not like yes. what Android does though, where you can just drop a widget anywhere and you right. can just have like your calendar somewhere and you know, you get used to it. But Android was definitely as far as customizing your phone and being able to make it really work for how you want it to, you know, organize things exactly how you want them so that you can, you know, see like actually see your calendar and then have your most used icons right above it rather than having to flip through screens and get to stuff. And that's pretty handy. Yeah. That's probably one of the things I'm most familiar with is the customization that you can do on photos. And when I first started working with Android, I was super annoyed because I was in the gallery, which I believe is the default kind of photo viewing mm -hmm. app on Android. And I couldn't figure out how to add another album. Well, <laughs> then I learned <laughs> it's not called an album. It's called a folder. And you need another app in order to do that. And so I found another app that actually can manage all of the photos. And I was super annoyed by that until I learned all of the amazing sorting and organization capabilities that I have with this other app. Yeah. And then it, and then it carries over into the gallery too. So then I can alphabetize or I can sort chronologically or I can sort reverse chron chronologically or, and on the iPhone in my, cause I can put things in albums, but the only way you can sort your album is the default, how it shows up. Time. Yeah. Which is how it was added, the chronological time that it was added to that album. Right. So if you edit it in an app a week later, it drops back. To the yes. top when you edit it, it doesn't stay with the original. Yes, or if you're trying to put together an album of photos that you want to, like I want to use in my Project Life app, well, and I put them in an album, they're not chronological. Yeah, it's kind of a pain, and there's no there's no way around that on iOS. Yeah, Apple definitely big brothers you more. They're like. No, you, we don't trust you with that. Yes. <laughs> you just use what we give you and you'd be happy with it. We don't trust you to be able to change your photo sort order, you crazy people. Right. right. You're just going to break your phones. We're not giving you that. <laughs> like, yeah. It's just easier to, to do that. Whereas, yeah, I felt like with the Android, like stock Android, you took it out of the box, you started it up. They gave you the basics. They were like, here you go. This is going to get you, uh, you know, off and running. But then there's so many apps out there that if you want to be like a power user and you have some very specific goals in mind for your data, that you can always find something that'll let you do it how you want to do it. Yeah. And that's sure. what I liked about Android. On Apple, I, you know, that's a trade off that I had to make when I switched that there's not always, even if I find a third party app that kind of makes me think, you know, deludes me into thinking it's going to be exactly <laughs> what I want. It never carries back over to anything. So maybe I can yeah. edit a bunch of pictures or add a bunch of stuff in that app. But if I go back to like the raw data, it's still Apple. They're not letting me mess with what they've figured out. Yeah. Yeah. And the, I guess one of the trade-offs in that as well is that the drawback on Android is that it, a lot of it feels clunky because it's not all fully seamlessly integrated. And on, on iOS, it doesn't feel as clunky to me when I'm doing things. Yeah. But I am limited on what I can do. Yeah. You have to like really go looking for it sometimes with Android. Like there's probably a solution out there for you. If there's a problem you run into on your Android phone, 
you could probably find someone who'd be like, I have an app that I use and it totally fixes that, but you have to, they're not going to make it easy. Like, here you go. Here's a bunch yeah. of stuff. This is just super going to fix all your problems. Plus their app store is like extensive. It's really just a, a crazy market in there. For sure. For but sure. I mean, my husband has a, um, the galaxy seven, the Samsung, that the camera on that thing blows my mind. Yeah. It's just, he and I can take a picture from the exact same spot on the couch of the cat. And like with my iPhone 7, it's it's a good picture. But then I'll look over at a screen and be like, what the heck? Like, why is yours so great? Yeah. <laughs> like yours is amazing. And it's like really like the lighting's great on it. And his, I'm pretty sure his is like more megapixels, which I don't put a lot of stock into. But yeah. He's got like a higher re- resolution and I'm always like, I'm really amazed with the camera on his phone. And that varies from phone to phone because, you know, like my mom's Android takes horrible pictures. Oh, really? But I mean, if you're really like, if that's with the Android market too, with all the different phones, you can really kind of pick the phone that has what you're looking for. So if like photography is number one on your list, there's a phone for that. But if you don't care so much about photography and you just need one that's like really good at running these really intense business apps or you want one um that i can't even think of other reasons why do people use their phones <laughs> but i mean you can always find a phone that will prioritize the thing you're looking for well, whereas so, with apple you kind of get what you get it, these yeah. these are the phones this year and while your friend might be freaking out because the camera is so great this time if you're like i don't really take that many photos with my iPhone, you may not, there might not be much in it for you this year. So it's true. I even, okay, so the phone that I have, the Android that I have is just, I got it on Amazon and it's actually one of their, it's a blue, I think blue something or the other, because they have a deal where if you buy, if you're prime, you can buy one of their Android phones for fairly inexpensive and then they stream ads to it, which, Hey, for this, my purposes, stream all the ads you want on Amazon. I'm good with that. Uh, but the camera on it, I have been really <laughs> surprised at how great it is in low light in just my average light in my house compared to my iPhone. And it's kind of bummed me out a little bit that it's uh-huh. so good. I get bummed out literally every time my husband shows me a picture on his phone. Yeah. And, we and I, have, probably... I have almost zero complaints about my iPhone camera. I'm not huge into iPhone photography, which I mean – Considering what your show is about, that's probably not what people <laughs> want to hear. I'm still a like the majority of my pictures are taken on my big camera. Um, but I do, like I said, take a lot of everyday pictures and those are all on my iPhone. <clears throat> I'm also somebody who will like take a pic- take both. I'll take like a couple quick pictures with my iPhone of something just because I know I'm going to want to put it on Instagram. And then I'll pull my big camera down and take actual pictures for my they're all actual pictures. I don't want to like, marginalize anybody's photos. I don't want anybody thinking that I don't care because I do. It's just that I still really love futzing with stuff. I still love having that control. I still love like the the intricacies of photography. Yeah. So like I'm not about making it easier. I've always said the same thing about my scrapbooking too. And people were like, I want to find ways to do it faster and, and, and okay. better and get more out and get as That's many pages me. done a year. And I'm like the opposite person where I'm like, I want to take it slow. And if it sits on my desk for a few days, it's great. And I want to savor it and prolong it. I'm not necessarily looking to speed up those things, but in other areas of my life I am. So the crafty, creative portions of my life probably because I have to design products and that's very deadline driven and it's very like it's got to be done this way and I, by this time and has to sell this much and it's very regimented that in other creative areas of my life I tend to be like I don't want pressure I want to play with it I don't care when it gets done and that's so, you know, where my phone offers obvious advantages and portability and I don't bring my big camera like when we're going on vacation, I don't bring it anymore. I'm not going to haul it out. But when I'm around it to Disney, I know I'm just not because I'm not it's going to drive me crazy to carry it around and have to worry about it, too. That's my other thing. I'm always really worried about my big camera. 
And so I don't want the worry. And that's where I really love having my phone. But still around my house, if I'm taking a picture of like my cat <laughs> or um, food that I made or the Christmas decorations, that's all on my big camera. I'm still taking it down for that. What is your big camera? Um, it, I just have a Nikon D7000, which is now several years old, but I still love it. So yeah. I'm tempted, though, to upgrade it again to get one. Of, mine was like the generation right before they have the Wi-Fi transfer, like where oh. the camera just does it. My, like the next generation was the one that where they're like, you don't even ever have to take the card out. And I was like, ah, I just would have waited <laughs> like, Shoot. another year. But now I've had this one for, you know, a few years. I want to say four years, maybe. But I, I still love it. It does what I want. And I'd have a hard time convincing my husband that I, you know, that I really super need, saw a need for it. Not that I need to convince him of anything, but I mean, because he's fine with, you know, he's not, he doesn't dictate my purchases, I guess is what I should say. But we do have some common priorities that I would have a hard time making the argument that the camera came ahead of any of those common priorities. (laughs) Like, no, honey, we're not going to remodel the bathroom because mama wanted a new camera. <laughs> like, this is... Those new storm windows. Yeah. Now we can go yeah. cold in the winter. Yeah. Oh, you want a new car? Sorry. I think I need a new camera. Like, <laughs> yeah. So that's where it becomes like on our list of priorities. It becomes hard for me to be like, oh, sorry, I spent like a, a bunch of money on this camera. So can we put off? That um, romantic things. getaway we were <laughs> <laughs> And instead, I'll just take pictures of us around the house. Hey, that works for me. <laughs> right? Win-win. <sighs> so, so, so yeah, I, I do have the D7000. I still love it. Um, I love my iPhone. Yeah, but... tell me some of the things that maybe... Once you switched, you were like, oh, I didn't know I could do this. Or were you, did you know everything? Not that. There was, I don't think there's been a single thing that my iPhone does that I was like, wow, that's, (laughs) (laughs) if anything, it's been, it was the opposite that, that drew me to the iPhone, which sound, which is a little counter, counterintuitive. I, in a lot of ways, felt like my Android did too much for me. It had blinking lights. It had a lot of notifications. And they were all things that I could turn off. But it's very hard for me to do that. I'm not. I'm someone who naturally um, doesn't like have thing, having things out there like surprises. So I had it all turned on on my phone. I wasn't going to like turn off notifications or turn off the blinking lights or anything because I didn't want to miss anything. And when I switched over to iPhone and there are no notification light, that was the biggest adjustment for me actually. It was not having a blinking light anywhere on it is that, that tells you that, that light this is the <laughs> Yeah. Oh. I, that's my BlackBerry. And so when I got my first iPhone, it was laying on my desk and I was like, where's the light? Like is, <laughs> like I kept looking at the little speaker thing and the camera lens like the little circles on the front I'm like is that the light like which one of these is the light that lets me know and (laughs) that you know I have email or something and I was like there's no light like there's literally no blinking light that tells me that there's stuff waiting for me on my phone just the lock screen comes up some with certain things you know to let me know but then it shuts off it doesn't (laughs) this blinking light has been driving me crazy because so On my Mac, whenever I'm using the camera, you know, doing video conferencing or anything with anyone, I have a light that is on on my Mac that's very similar to the blinking light on my Android. And so I've been sitting here thinking, who is hacked into my camera? It's letting you know that like something, (laughs) that you have a new email or like you can on some phones even like on my... I think I could I could like download an app that made the light change colors, so it was different colors oh. for different things. But um, but now on my husband's phone, that light drives me nuts. Like it, it got to the point where I felt like when I first got my iPhone, I had to adjust to being less informed or less um, 
like chained to my phone because unless I happen to catch, like if I had it flipped over, screened down on my desk, there's no knowing what was going on on it. (laughs) Right. Because I never saw the things and I always have my sound off. So I usually just have it on vibrate. And for a while, that was very unsettling for me. I felt like a little stressed or anxious about the fact that my phone was letting me down in this area. Like, how? Do, what did I switch to that now I'm like out here in the world blind without my blinking light? Like, how do I, how do I know? How am I going to get through life? And then over time, that came to be probably the thing I loved most about it was that it weaned me off this dependency on my phone and that I could actually just leave it and not worry about it. That the iPhone allowed me to actually become less connected, which in, I mean, as someone like me, who's very obsessed with my business was something I needed. Like nobody was going to step in and do that for me. And Apple had to do that for me. They had to step in and be like, you know what? It's okay if you want to watch TV and not worry about what's coming in in your email. You just let it go. It'll be there tomorrow. Like it was this very calming force in my life to finally have this phone that was, it was less naggy is what I said. My Android nagged me and I could have turned it all off. And people have made that argument to me. They're like, just turn that off. I turn all that off on mine. I don't have it. And I'm like, that's asking me to do something I'm incapable of doing. Like I have to make that choice then to turn it off. I'm never going to do that. I'm never going to be the person who's like, I don't need to know what's coming in my email. Like I'm not going to be that person. So yeah, I know I could do it, but you're leaving that option up to me. And I think that once I got my iPhone and got kind of excited about that idea, it actually did make me go into my phone and turn off a lot of things um, because I, I started to like that feeling. So now I actually have gone in even the stuff that Apple does notify me about and turn it off because... You know, like when we leave for vacation, I'll go in. The first thing I'll do, like in the first hour we're on the road, is be on my phone just turning everything off. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Because otherwise I know I won't disconnect. I know Good that for about you. myself. And I Good need for that you. to do it. And that phone helped me. But then, you know, don't say good for me yet. <laughs> And to compensate for that, I got an Apple Watch. So now basically <laughs> my whole thing for the Apple Watch was so that I could just shoot notifications over there. And it's just less distracting for me to yes. like quick look at my watch and be like, <laughs> okay, that's not important. And then put my watch back down. So at least I'm not pulling my phone out of my purse or scrambling. Like, what is that? What is, who's calling? What was that? Now that eliminated stress, but now it's made me probably more connected again because I just send it all over to the watch. Funny. But that I, I do love the watch. I mean, I can't live without that now. Apple has a way of like infiltrating my life and just getting its hooks in. Like they're just. Yeah. They have a way of, and this is what I always say about Apple. They have a way of creating things that you didn't even know you needed. Right. Until you got it. And then you're like, oh my gosh, I needed this and I can't live without it. I could not live without this silly watch. And my sister's had one for a year, and she kept telling me that. And my sister is not a phone-dependent person. She's the antithesis of what I would call a super-connected person. She's one of those annoying people that you can text her. And then days later, she'll respond and be like, sorry, I haven't checked my phone. You're like, how have you not checked your phone in two days? <laughs> like, She's that kind of person that drives you crazy. And she says that her Apple Watch is like she couldn't live without it. And I was like, if you don't even care that much about your phone and don't even really check it that often and you can't live without this watch, I think I need to get this watch. Yeah. Can we throw in what your sister's name is? Cinnamon. Yes. So awesome. I love your parents (laughs) for naming you guys peppermint and cinnamon. Right. I know. I do. Okay. Go ahead. And that's like, you know, that's the other thing I think Apple has really done for me is have all these products that all work with each other really well. Because I had an Android phone and an Android tablet, but they weren't the same. And that was on me because, you know, the phone that I used also made a tablet. I could have easily done that. But again, I think that having my choices limited makes you make the correct decision. Whereas when in Android, the reason I chose the tablet I chose was because of a lot of things, the price point, the reviews, everything like that. But I wasn't necessarily thinking like, how well is it going to work with my phone? 
Apple kind of takes that decision out for you. And while that can be frustrating because you're like, I'm stuck with only the products they offer me in a lot of ways, they're saying like, yeah, but we know we know how to make it better for you. <laughs> That's like alarming, but also like kind of nice because they're saying we've already thought of all that and this is all going to work together. Yeah. But. They've thought of a lot of the stuff that we haven't thought of and they do make it so easy for everything to work together seamlessly. I will say though, that all the people who say they've never had a problem with their iPhones, that it's always, I, I was right there with them for the two years I had my iPhone six. I have had just a series of problems since my seven and even with my watch with oh, just yeah. ridiculous things. My seven updated and never got past, it got stuck in a reboot loop. Oh, frustrating. And then my iCloud backup was corrupted, so I couldn't even restore it. Every time I would restore from the, um, from iCloud, it would crash the phone again and get stuck in a reboot loop. They had to wipe my whole phone. I had to start all over. And <laughs> I've never had to do that on any phone I've been on, even my Blackberries. And I dropped a Blackberry in a puddle of water and didn't lose any data. Wow. <laughs> so it was really alarming to me that when they handed it back to me and they were like, yeah, sorry, it's just starting over. I was like, what? You, nothing? Like, all I get is, I mean, basically, I didn't lose my photos or anything because they were all backed up to Dropbox and everything. But because I'm not someone who uses a Mac computer and I didn't have, you know, I don't send my photos to iCloud. I don't back any of that stuff up. I literally just had a brand new iPhone with nothing on it. None of my contacts, nothing. Just oh, done. Now, all my contacts are backed up in Google, but that's on Google. That's not on Apple because right. I couldn't use any of my backups they were all corrupted so in order to restore just my contacts it had to restore everything and the apps that were corrupted in my backup were the phone app and the mail app so whenever it would get to restoring those that would break my phone again oh so, wow so I had that no would have been super frustrating yeah it was so I was like well I won't lose all my contacts because they're all stored in Google but thanks Google for that no exactly. thanks to Apple for it because the only reason that I had all my contacts in Google was because I had had Android for so many years. Had I never used Android and never just, like when I got my iPhone, I just imported all my Google contacts. Mm -hmm. So the only contacts I actually lost when they had to wipe my iPhone were any that I added specifically to my time. iPhone, which was like three people. It wasn't yeah. a big deal. But yeah, so that's like a problem I've never had and that I was really surprised that there was just nothing that could be done. Like, they're just, you know, they tried restoring from every past backup of mine, like all the ones that were left, you know, to, I probably had five or six different versions back and I was like, that's fine. I mean, just to wherever you can get it working from, I'll deal with it, but none of them would work. Oh my goodness. That's and then there lesson. was, yeah, so now I... I do um, back up to my computer, which wouldn't have helped me in this case either. I hadn't done that before. Like, I never did, like, an iTunes backup. I just always did the iCloud one. Yeah. I do now hook it up to my computer about once a week and let it sync through there just to back stuff up. Because they had said if I had had a computer backup, like one that was on my hard drive, that they have software that can kind of go in and cherry pick information from those backups so at least they could have pulled that out but I was like I've never done that that's crazy why would I hook a cloud capable phone up to my computer <laughs> who hooks stuff up to their computer right. I don't <laughs> when they were like oh well do you have an iTunes backup I'm like I don't even have iTunes installed <laughs> on my computers why would I hook a phone up to a computer to back it up and they were like oh well because then we could go in and pull some stuff out to get you some of your stuff back. And I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. What is this, 1980? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, I have, so I have a, all of my photos backed up into several different places in the cloud, five different places in the cloud. But as far as iCloud goes, I do have them backed up there. But I always say that iCloud isn't really a true backup. It's more disaster recovery. Mm -hmm. But I, not so even I, disaster. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and apparently not even disaster recovery for peppermint. Nope. Um, so, but I do have my contacts as well, double backed up. I have them in iCloud and then 
I set up a thing through um, If This Then That, IFTTT, which... Oh, they've changed their name, though, I think. They don't go by IFTTT anymore. You introduced me to that ages ago. Uh Uh-huh. And so all of my contacts are automatically added to a Google spreadsheet as well. Oh, that's fancy. Mine, I just switched right in the phone. It pulls my contacts from Google. So they just... They're stored in my Gmail account, and that's where they stay. So any new contact that I enter in my phone goes to Google. It just yeah. it do, it never stores in the phone. Yeah. Um, I had had a few that had done that before I realized I had to do that setting. Like when I first got my six, I didn't realize until I went to send an email one day on my computer. And I was like, why is this person's email not on? I can email them from my phone. And then I realized that I had been storing them to the iPhone instead of to Google. Uh-huh. But now I switched that. So it all just, if I add someone on my phone, it's instantly in my, well, I guess Google apps, it's not necessarily Gmail, but all my business email and everything is run by Google apps. So they're all in there and it's all backed up. So again, when I say that, like, I haven't fully separated from Google, they're still, they are my man. I, they're still where I go. They're still my everything. Google is my, except for Google Photos. Hello. We got to get you there. Except for Google Photos. <laughs> Which is why I just have to bite the bullet and do it. Just log in. That's all you need to do, really. I but. feel like, like I have everything in Lightroom. I have a, like stuff in Dropbox is kind of like a conduit. And then I also back it all up to Amazon Photos because you get like free photo storage mm-hmm. with Amazon. So that's like a backup. Plus I back it up in my actual backups, like to... <laughs> To your you know, server crash or whatever. Plan or whatever the uh-huh. offset one. So it's like, how many places do I need to have my photos? Like, I'm not some, I have nothing to hide, but it just seems like that's a lot of places to have your personal stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I'm posting racy photos or anything. So I guess if people want to look at pictures of my cats, like if the Russians want to <laughs> hack up the pictures of my cats, they can feel free. But it still starts to get a little like weird to me that I have my personal family photos all over the place. Right. But then, yeah, the argument is, why do I care? I don't really. Like, if a bunch of places want them, I mean, what's the downside to having all these places in case one goes belly up or, you know, it's always good. To, but I have, like, five backups at this point. You know, I just had this image pop into my head as you are talking. I'm like, I wonder if 20 years down the road, you know how now people will come across physical photos from people at garage sales or whatever and be like, Wait. huh, I wonder what the story is behind this. I wonder if 20, 30 years from now, someone will come across Peppermint's digital. I wonder. Like, this woman took a lot of pictures of donuts. <laughs> donuts and cats. Yeah. Like she really, really liked donuts. <laughs> That's what they're going to think about me. But wonder who you are. Uh, it'll be pretty easy to figure out. <laughs> <laughs> I guess with geolocation and all of that stuff. You know what I should do? I should get my husband to do it first because he's been in this um, scanning, just just a bunker for years, scanning all of his families and his extended families' physical photos and wow. getting them up on um, Flickr, right? Is it still Flickr? I don't even remember. Yes, it's still Flickr. <laughs> Flickr. So they're all on there and then everybody's part of the albums and they can all go in and add names and dates and stuff they remember. It's this big project he's been doing. He yeah. took it over when his dad died a couple of years ago and his dad had always wanted to do it and then had never really gotten off the ground with it and that's his thing. So he'll he spends so many hours in his office just scanning photos and getting them put into these things. And I wonder if I could get him to try the Google Photos and see, like, what that does for him. The thing is, though, that, like, I know it depends a lot on, like, your metadata. Mm -hmm. And the stuff he's scanning, he has to manually add metadata for because obviously he's scanning it. So he has to go based on the dates that his family tells him. But if there's a way to, like, then pull it from the information that's been added to Flickr then that could create actual albums from where he's having to manually then be like, oh, okay, so these photos go with these and try to move them around within Flickr so that like certain family trips all wind up together. Because like he'll scan pictures from his mom, but then also his aunt, and they both took pictures at the same event. And he's got to figure out how to get all those together from two mm-hmm. different perspectives. 
And mm-hmm. that's where he ends up spending a lot of time being like, oh, wait, this was from that same trip to the farm and everybody was there and you guys just all took photos. So then he has to like change all the metadata a little bit to get it all to match. Yeah. If he's, so is he uploading them and then changing the, the metadata? Like what, what's his process? He upload, he scans and does the metadata on everything that he knows. Mm-hmm. Like if he, like his family photos. And then those all get uploaded to Flickr with that, you know, parts of that visible yeah. locations and stuff. He actually like geo tags them and stuff if he knows yeah. the locations for them. But then other things that he doesn't know, it's he's crowdsourcing the answer basically. Yeah. So he's putting them up and being like, who's this? You know, I know that those are my cousins, so and so and so and so. But then who is this third kid? And then it's kind of like, oh, that was uh, a family friend's kid, you know. And then he's getting the information and he's going back in and changing it. Yeah. His end. If, he's, and if he's adding all of that information into the metadata before he uploads it, he could upload all of that to Google Photos, and it would sort it based on the geolocation and the dates that he's entering. Because that would basically replace the scan dates. And so it would all be sorted chronologically, automatically in Google Photos. And then he could he could uh, do the geolocation sorting and then facial recognition too. Yeah. Because he could really use that. Like he's using Lightroom. Um, so he can use their facial recognition. But... I just think there's got to be an easier way, but there's still certain things he has to enter because, mm-hmm. you know, they're 35 millimeter photos. Yeah. Yeah. I have him try it out. It would be interesting to have him just upload a batch of photos and see what he thinks about it. There's a lot of people in my, I have a Facebook group for people that uh, finished the photo fabulous, the free class. And there's lots of questions all the time on scanning. So I'm learning a lot about how Google photos and scan photos interact with each other and how it works. But I've, I've uploaded my uncle scanned had a bunch of photos from their growing up hundreds of photos from when they were growing up scanned. And the person that did it entered all of the metadata, correct all of the dates. Cause my uncle had put sticky notes on there and so I've uploaded it into Google Photos, and it it surprised me. I didn't expect it to be able to sort it, but I've got photos in there from 1971, and it just I can scroll through the chronological dates, and there it, those photos show up. Yeah, that's what he did with mine because I his latest his last project was I just handed over all of my albums mm-hmm. and all my boxes of photos, all my shoe boxes. And had him scan all of them in because we bought him an even fancier scanner for Christmas and he wanted to try it out. I was like, here you go, buddy. Here's a project. (laughs) Yeah. But then it was a lot of questions. Like he would come up to me with his laptop and be like, was this picture before or after this picture? Like certain ones he knew because they had the date on them because a lot of them, my camera, I left the date function on them. Um, And I'd have to sit and think like, Gosh, I don't know. Like, I'd be looking at my haircut and looking at yeah. the background and like, I think after, or he'd be like, where was this? And I'd be like, I think that was my ex-mother-in-law's house, but so many years ago, it's like a totally different house. Now. Like, it's just weird to look through it. And he's having to piece all of that together. And it's, he likes it, but <laughs> I'm sure he'd welcome any way to make it easier. Yeah. I, you'll have to keep me posted. Let me know if he tries it out. What do you think? Okay. But I just realized we've been recording a while. It's so fun to talk to you. <laughs> yeah. How long does this to... go? But yeah. I probably need to wrap it up. But um, thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate it. I really hope you'll come back again. We'll find some more techie, geeky, fun things to talk about. And Yeah. I mean, I'm that. sure I'll take another vacation and have a day off sometime. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for spending some of your time <laughs> off today with me. I really appreciate it a ton. I felt so bad. You're like, pick a day. And I'm like, there's only one. <laughs> <laughs> one day this month that I requested off before I leave town. Yeah. All yours. Thank you. I appreciate that a ton. So uh, remind everyone where they can, where you can be found. I can be found chained to my desk 24 <laughs> hours a day. Designing for the man. That's what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> they can find my digital products at One Little Bird Designs. 
dot com. That's my website. They're for sale at the dash lilypad dot com. And then uh, physical products, if they're if people are into that, and why wouldn't you be? Honestly, have people tried stamping because it's the best? <laughs> Um, you can find a lot of those at Studio Calico every month and on an ongoing basis in their store. Most of them are also available digitally there, which I don't think I tell people enough, but they are. Fun. And then, um, you know, to be continued, I guess. Peppermint Walk- Granberg on Instagram. Peppermint Granberg on Instagram. Lost I don't famous. post hardly any cat photos on there you actually don't post that many cat photos i post to my stories because when instagram added stories i was like that's for my cat pictures <laughs> and now because i used to post cat pictures and then i would just lose a ton of followers i'm like what is wrong with people <laughs> I tell people who post cat pictures why do people not want to see cat pictures Funny. so now i post them all to the stories because i figure people can just not look at those if they choose not to, yeah. I'm going to spell your – peppermint is spelled traditionally, and then the last name is G-R-A-N-B-E-R-G, right? Mm-hmm. On Instagram. That is me. Okay. Thank you so much, Peppermint. I appreciate it. Ah, oh, it was good to talk to a human being. <laughs> Even if it was me. <laughs> Part of the day. Like, you should see how crazy I am after a couple of years of not talking to human beings every week. Well, you don't want to yeah. spend an afternoon with this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much just tackle hug anybody who wants to talk for a while. <laughs> we'll do it again for sure. <laughs> we'll see you next time on Modern Photo Solutions. Just a quick reminder, if you haven't taken the free Photo Fabulous First Step class that I was telling Peppermint about, then you will want to hurry and grab it. It will teach you everything you need to know and even didn't know you needed to know about Google Photos. You can get it by going to modernphotosolutions.com forward slash free. That will also let, put you on the list for the next step in the courses that I have the heart of Photo Fabulous. I'm about to open registration for the first time ever for the Android version, and I will reopen registration for the iOS version version again at the same time. I am hoping to get that done in the next week. So please pray with me (laughs) that I can get it done. (laughs) I am working really hard and I'm getting close, but Sometimes things take me a lot longer than I think they're going to, I, but I'm going to do everything I can to at least have it up and registration open before my daughter gets home on the 4th. And if I don't, then I'm going to be super, super sad and everyone will have to grieve with me. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next time on Modern Photo Solutions. <music>